Right, there we go. I've had so many issues trying to record this video and I think that is finally it. So welcome back to Naked Exposure. And I'm gonna be talking about the Agfa Isoleti L, which actually reminds me I don't even have the camera. Jesus, production quality, an A plus. So here we go. This is the Agfa Isoleti L camera. And it is a six by six medium format, German made, hunk of delicious metal, gorgeous, sexy, mega, nice camera that has a lot of really, really, really annoying quirks about it. Um, but quirks that kind of make the camera. So I'm gonna show you some images that I've taken on it. The, the very few images that have actually turned out and worked from this camera. And I'm just gonna tell you what it is like shooting a camera that is 67 years old, older than both my parents. Oh, and is in mint condition. It's, it's in really nice condition, my camera. I had to say that, like I had to say that. I feel like I own one of the best examples in the world and I feel like that's quite cool. Um, so yeah, the background to this is, I was given the camera on my 21st birthday from my parents and that's why it kind of has like a good connection with me. You know, I have a bond with this camera. I've had it for now over a year and I've shot about, I'd say about six rolls of film through it. Now that's like not very much, but the reasons being, is, as I mentioned earlier, getting an actual image to come out of this is difficult. And 80% of a roll usually doesn't come out and there's many different factors to that. Now, the first one I'm gonna talk about is, yeah, it comes out like that, it's pretty cool. First one I'm gonna talk about is the focusing on this. That's the first nightmare. Because it's so old and it's not a TLR or anything, it doesn't, have it. so I'm getting ahead of myself. The way I need to explain it is, the focus ring is at the front, right? So when you're trying to take a picture and you want to, like, there's a subject away, there's two meters away. So instead of just being able to look here and change it, you have to flip the camera around, go to two meters, flip it back around and shoot. And inside of uh, the viewfinder, there is no rangefinder patch and there is no view in the focus because it's not an SLR, it's not a rangefinder, it's just a, this is just glass for viewing where the actual image is going to be the composition it doesn't help with focusing at all now this might seem easy you know if you're shooting a landscape if you're shooting at like an aperture of like f8 f11 f16 and you've got a lot of things in focus it's not really a problem at all obviously because you know you can see the distance scale on the lens you can see oh between this and this is going to be in focus but when you're shooting wide open and wide open on this is not that wide open but it's still wide open is a 4.5 an aperture 4.5 your focus is so narrow and you're really guessing where the focus is. Now, I think I'm making this sound really complicated, but it's not. Basically it goes in increments. So it has a one meter, a 1.2 meters, a 1.5, a 1.7. And when you have to bang dead on one of those focus points without having any idea how, what it would actually look like, it's so difficult. So I've tried to take portraits before and been like, okay, they're 1.2 meters away. Take the picture. It always either, back focuses or front focuses getting it on the eye or anywhere close to the face i've had about one or two shots maybe that have come out close enough in focus and that's i'm blabbing a lot i need to get back to what i was actually saying but that's one of the main things that annoys me about this camera is the you know it's unreliable straight up unreliable if you're really wanting to get an image if something is important if you're doing a shoot that you really want the image to turn out this is not the camera for you Nine out of 10 times, you're not gonna get it in focus and you're not gonna get the shot shooting wide open. Um, but, of course you can use a measuring tape or something, but I still wouldn't trust the exact measurements on this scene as how old it is, nearly 70 years old, you know? Those, the, the lens saying it's at a certain distance, is it gonna be accurate? Who knows, no one knows. Maybe on this model because it's so clean, but um, yeah. What else was I going to say about it? Yeah, so it's a very slow, methodic camera. You've got that focusing thing. So alongside that, you also have your shutter speed. It's fairly simple. It's just a dial that turns on the front. You've got a 25th, a 50th, a 100th, and a 200th of a second in bulb mode, so you could do some long exposures. Um, and then you've got your apertures, which was just through a little ring. Those are fairly straightforward, nothing too scary. Um, but yeah, number one being focus. It screwed me on so many images, but this is the thing that leads me to all of this rambling, is when you get that image, when you get the image in focus, and you know, you 
manage to get a shot, you, you get your negatives and you're like, oh my God, that's actually in focus. How did I manage that? It's beautiful. And it's beautiful in its own way because it's not sharp, you know. It's sharpish, it's pretty decent actually, it's not bad. It's nothing like a Hasselblad 500cm sharp, but it's nice. And the reason it is so nice is there's actually quite a few reasons, but the way it renders the background. Now, like, you know, swirly bokeh is the, the hip thing that everyone goes for. It's the look, it's the wall, it's so dreamy look. But this is like, this is like a low key swirly bokeh. It's not in your face, it's not like, holy shit, just swirls, the whole thing looks like a washing machine. It's like, wow. This is like, really nice. And I think I've only captured one or two images that kind of highlight how it works, but it's very smooth, you know. You can see everything in the frame is swirling around to the center, but it's so minimal and so hard to see. Um, but that look is just really awesome. And it makes me love this camera in a very different way. I'm usually a very much, I want sharpness, or I want, you know, quick, easy to use, I want quiet, I want this, I want that. And I sacrifice here quickness, it's a very slow camera. I sacrifice image quality because I'm shooting medium format, it costs a shit ton of money to shoot, and I'm not getting the sharpest negative. But in exchange, I'm getting a really fun, different experience. Um, I'm getting, I don't know, it, it's, it's cool, it's got a cool factor, and I'm getting that sort of background separation that other lenses and other things don't give me. Um, oh yeah, that's a good point. It's got a 85mm 4.5, so obviously it's medium format, so it's not 85 mils. I'm guessing that would be about 45-50mm lens, um, which is pretty decent, you know, 4.5, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting little camera. I think I'm just going to run some images, just play some music, the little amount of images as I have, as I have, that I have, but yeah, one of those little gems that shouldn't be a gem but really is a gem and will always be a gem, but no one will know it's a gem, so it's a gem. And if you manage to find one for really cheap, I would advise getting it because you're never really going to go wrong with this. Um, it's got a nice look to it, but yeah. If you have any questions about it, please leave them in the comments. I'm definitely going to do a video in the future with this camera. That is my aim. I'm going to get some colour film, go out shooting with this thing, see what I can get, experiment. I have low hopes for those images coming out, but you know, if I get that one image, it's all worth it. Yeah, I'm going to cover this more in the future. I'm going to talk about more cameras soon. Um, yeah, I think this is much more a style that my channel is about. It's not about crazy, you know, well-presented stuff, well tailored it's just it's just me getting on with my daily life which my daily life is usually going to college going out shooting and editing pictures in my room that's really what my life revolves around and just fitting a camera into that and talking about my cameras my ideas my thoughts my images it kind of makes sense into the fitting into all of it so yeah subscribe to the channel and be sure to look out for more thank you for watching